Using multiple microphone positions that come with our virtual orchestra libraries gives us a ton of mixing control, but also uses a ton of RAM, and for a full orchestra, maybe even more RAM than we have. Wouldn't it be nice if we could compose our music using a more efficient single mic template, and then quickly load those extra mics when it's time to mix, you know, without having to click the mouse and eyes glazing over a number of times. There are definitely better ways. Let's talk through three of them. Hey everyone, my name is Eric. I'm a composer and software engineer, and this channel goes deep into the tech behind film TV and game scoring. And a common technical challenge is just how much virtual orchestra we can squeeze into our available RAM, or even how long that orchestra takes to load up when we first open a project. So let's get into my absolute favorite workflow for this, starting off composing with a single mic position, and I'll show you how we can quickly switch over to multiple mics when we're ready for more detailed mixing. I've got a little example music here written with Cinematic Studio Brass, which I thought would be a good example for this video, just because of how large a difference microphone balance makes with this particular library. So let's hear a little bit. Now there's a lot that I really love about the sound that we're getting, especially the tone and natural slurred legato transitions we get in the trumpets, trombones, and tuba. But there's one thing that really jumps out at me, and that's just how upfront everything is, you know, a little closer than I'm really naturally comfortable with. Now the library is called Cinematic Studio Brass, not Cinematic Epic Symphony Hall Brass, but I do usually like a little more of a symphonic brass space, sounding like it's coming from the back of a concert hall. There are certainly some mixing, especially EQ and spatial tools that we could use to try and achieve this, but I think at least 50% of the battle is in microphone placement and balance. It's not too much we can do about placement with an already recorded sample library, but we can certainly tweak the volume balances. So let's say I'm finished with the composition stage. How quickly can I get those additional mic signals loaded into this project? So solution number one, and the easiest technique that I'm aware of here relies on Vienna Ensemble Pro. Now don't jump away just yet if you're not a user, because we're gonna spend the most time on this one talking through a few important things like automating mic position volumes and loudness balancing, where those same exact principles will apply to the other two solutions. I'll explain the nuance afterward, but let's see the actual changeover workflow first. Oh, and my assistant here is going to race us using the manual approach. So I will save and close this DAW project. Then in Vienna Ensemble Pro, I can load this server preset that I've already made. Wait for it to load, which still can be a good time to go grab a coffee. There we go. Then I'll reopen the DAW project. Flip down here to enable this mic position automation, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Now I can hit play. And now I have a sound balance that's a lot closer to what I want, meaning farther away. Of course, some mixing tools definitely would still help push everything back even more, but relying more heavily on these room mics is a much better starting point for that mixing work. And that took way fewer clicks than having to individually open every single contact instance, go channel by channel and click on all these right mic positions. Still not instantaneous, but it's a lot easier to hit one button, go grab a quick coffee, and then have your orchestra ready to go than to have to sit there and do all this drudgery every single time. Oh, hey, how's the manual process going? It's worth saying, in a lot of libraries, the default mix signal might already have the perfect balance of sound for what we're going for. In the same series, for example, Cinematic Studio Strings, I think benefits a lot less from tweaking individual mic positions. And the easiest way to solve this whole workflow challenge is to not have to change anything in the first place. But back to Cinematic Studio Brass, let's break this down a little bit more. 
The central idea that makes this approach work is modularity, meaning we can treat everything that happens inside of this entire Vienna Ensemble Pro instance, here an entire brass section, as a swappable module. And because the I.O. interface with the set of MIDI channels coming in and audio signals coming out is exactly the same, the DAW doesn't have to care what goes on inside of that virtual black box. It's just like how we don't have to know how a modular synth module works inside of its case, and we can easily swap out one for another. People often talk about multi-computer your setups as the primary benefit of Vienna Ensemble Pro, but even with one machine, keeping samples preserved in memory as we open and close DAW projects, and this idea of modularity I think are both super useful. And of course, by saving and loading presets, we can swap out the contents of one or more modules with a single click. I still had to go through that mind-numbing drudgery of clicking all the individual mic positions, assigning outputs, and so on, but thankfully I only had to do that work once. Oh yeah, uh, finished yet? Hmm, I see. Well, let's check back in with him at the end of this video. There's a lot we could talk about here, but let's specifically look at three easy to overlook details that I think are particularly important to get right with this workflow. One, the DAW project automatically reconnected to the new Vienna Ensemble Pro instance when we opened it back up. Two, the DAW still retains automation control over the exact balance of mic positions. And three, the loudness stayed basically the same. It didn't get a lot louder or quieter when we switched to a new set of mics. And the first trick is to not change this name of the VE Pro instance across your different presets. What I used to do was put some sort of name like multi-mic or the particular mic position in the instance name, but that added an extra step of in the DAW having to reconnect each plugin to its corresponding instance with a different name. So by keeping the name identical, the DAW should automatically reconnect for us. One subtlety I'll just quickly mention here is that this all works best in what's called decoupled mode. You just have to make sure that you are super disciplined about saving and backing up your Vienna Ensemble profiles together with your DAW projects before you decide to flip that on. All right, now how do we still give the DAW control to set and automate the volume of each mic position? At a high level, we can automate these mic position volumes using either MIDI controllers, which we'll look at in solution number three toward the end, or my usual preference using audio routing and automation tools, which we'll look at now. Even if you're not using Vienna Ensemble Pro, you will face the exact same structural questions here of how you pull this off with some combination of multiple audio outputs, group and bus tracks, or VCA faders. There's so many possible variations to this, and we just don't have the time to do a complete how-to in this video. I do want to show, though, structurally how my end result actually works, and along the way, if anything doesn't make sense, feel free to drop me a question below, and I'm happy to provide some more detail. But basically, I configure each contact sample player instance to have three separate audio outputs, which I then route each one of these three mic signals to. And instead of having to mix down all of the main close and ambient mics across the whole library with group or bus tracks, we can just use VCA faders to automate the individual outputs in tandem. In VE Pro, these folders work very similar to track stacks in Logic, where this built-in VCA fader will automate the volume of everything contained inside that folder without having to mix it all down to a bus. And the main trick here is just dragging and dropping these separate mic signal audio outputs from each plugin instance into these different folders. So we still get individual audio outputs for every instrument, but we can control the mic balance within each instrument and across all the instruments by having the DAW automate those VCA faders. And back in the DAW, I can save whatever balance of mic positions I want along with every DAW project file and not have to change the Vienna Ensemble Pro templates to do that. Which brings us to the last detail here. How do we make sure the transition from one mic to multiple doesn't completely screw up how loud each instrument sounds? This process works best when you have some real music to balance with. And when you first set up a library, I highly recommend writing 30 seconds or so of music like I've done here. That's for a bunch of reasons. For one, just to make sure you're happy with with everything before you start making multiple versions of that setup, but it also helps with things like loudness balancing. So I usually like to start off with my single mic template. In this case, I'll use this default mix signal as my reference. Cubase has this built-in LUFS loudness meter, but there are definitely free plugins out there to do the same thing if you don't already have one handy. You could even use RMS metering, just please don't use digital peaks because they give you basically zero useful information about how loud something is. With this reset, I play through this excerpt. So that comes out to an integrated loudness of minus 16.8 luffs. And what I wanna do is make the multi-mic version match that same loudness. 
Now I'll swap in the multi-mic version with the balance that I had originally dialed in and repeat this measurement test. So this measured a little bit quieter, which means I have to raise the whole thing by 1.3 dB, which I can just add to these mic signals individually. So repeating that test, we come out to within 0.1 dB, which is plenty close. So now even though loudness doesn't change that much, there is still a really big character change from the default mix to this multi-mic version. So I decided to make an alternate version of the module using just the room mics instead of the mix signal. And when I measured this one the same way, it came out to 1.8 decibels quieter than the mix signal did. So this time I wanted to compensate for that level difference right inside of the Vienna Ensemble Pro module itself. And there's a little utility insert plugin that this comes with called Matrix Mixer. And we can do some cool delay tricks with this as well, but here just a simple 1.8 dB boost to the left and right channel on each instrument, which I copied across, means that this is now loudness matched with the mix signal, so it's more interchangeable. So that's all well and good, but what if you don't have or want to use Vienna Ensemble Pro? Solution number two is to use a common DAW only trick to save on RAM until we need it with disabled tracks. I'll use a much simpler library this time around, and this is a nice little freebie from Fluffy Audio called Haunted Choir, which is a women's choir that comes with two articulations that I have duplicated four times each to give me four independently controllable voices. And it also has four different mic positions. So here in this single mic template, I only have the mid mic position enabled and along with a generous helping of reverb, it sounds something like this. And then down in this second folder, I have an identical set of tracks, which is currently disabled. And I had copied the original set down, configured it to enable all four mic positions, and then disabled everything so that nothing is loaded into RAM until we are ready for it. So the workflow looks like this. We take our MIDI data and copy it down into this set of tracks down here. Then we can disable the single mic version, and then come to this multi mic version and enable those tracks. And then this contact instance has all four mic positions enabled with each channel as I set it up to do. And so if I hit play now, we hear all four mic signals, which honestly is nowhere near as dramatic a difference as we had with Cinematic Studio Brass. Really, it sort of sounds like a thicker sound, like we have more singers in the choir, if anything, but we could certainly tilt the sound balance towards more of the close mics if we wanted a different character. Friendly reminder, if you just jumped ahead to this chapter, that you may want to go back and watch some of the Vienna Ensemble Pro Solution because we talked about mic position automation and loudness matching, which both apply the same exact way in this scenario. The downsides here are having to move your MIDI data around, and if you decide to make changes to one template, you have to remember to copy those back into the other version. Though to be fair, that affects our VE Pro solution too. So our last approach, solution number three, is to control everything from one set of tracks and sample player plugins, which we can do through automation or a bit more tediously through per plugin presets. It's decently common for library manufacturers to default assign or to let us customize a MIDI controller on each volume fader per mic position, and that's one solution to automating mic volume balance, but it doesn't solve the RAM conservation problem. It's sadly a lot less common to be able to use MIDI controllers to flip the on and off switches that load and unload samples from memory. Cinematic Studio Brass we were working with earlier lets us assign MIDI controllers to the volume faders per mic position, but as far as I can tell, doesn't give us any way to do the same with its on off switches. Side note for that library in particular though, is I've seen some pretty wonky behavior with MIDI control of the volume faders. Lucky for us, this Haunted Choir library uh, does just fine and lets us assign MIDI control to the on-off switches as well. 
So these are the MIDI controllers that I have assigned to those on-off switches and volume faders. And I'll show you at the very beginning of this project, I have these little MIDI parts that just initialize MIDI controllers to particular values. The first one of these sets things like the mod wheel and uh, expression, main volume, and so on. Not really related to mic positions, but I break out the controllers around mic positions separately so that I can toggle on the behavior that I want. And it's easiest to see what this is doing with the old school list based editor. So here I have assignments for each of those MIDI controllers. And you can see I just have the on switch for 82, which is this mid mic on and off. So that's flipped on. And then this one controls the volume level for that. And so the workflow this time, I can just toggle on a different set of initialization rules, uh, which I can do with the mute tool here in one move in Cubase. And then this multi-mic version, unsurprisingly, flips on all four mic signals and sets appropriate levels for them. So now as soon as I play this back, it initializes all those on switches to load the additional mic positions and sets volume faders to where I have them configured. But what else can we do if those on off switches aren't automatable? And there's really only one half workable solution left and that's to use multi-instrument presets within each sample player plugin individually. If you can load your full orchestral template into a small number of contact multi or similar other player instances, let's say one for woodwinds, one for brass and so on, then maybe it's feasible to pull up each one and individually load a new preset when the time comes. Last thing you're probably wondering, how much RAM do we actually save by using single mic versus multi mic versions of our templates? Now, with all the usual caveats that this depends a lot on your specific hardware and software, how you have contact configured, how you choose to set up your templates, articulations and instruments, and all of that. I'll give you some actual numbers. So I measured my Cinematic Studio brass template the way I like to set it up with duplicate versions of some instruments, one articulation per MIDI channel, some extra legatos, all that good stuff. And the single mic version of this template clocks in at already whopping 25 gigabytes of RAM versus the multi mic version at 32 and a half gigs of RAM. So that's seven and a half gigs difference between the two. You'll notice the multi mic version is not three times the amount of RAM, which means that a lot of what we're dealing with here is the kind of other stuff that's happening inside of contact itself but that's still seven and a half gigabytes that i could do other things with now if i was more sane and had a simple setup with one instrument and all the articulations in one mini channel no duplicate instruments then this comes in at a much more reasonable seven gigabytes for the single mic version and 14 and a half gigabytes for the multi mic and i'm glad that it's exactly the same seven and a half gigabyte difference between the two which means means it is just those extra sample headers that we're loading for the new mic positions that makes the difference. But this is just for a brass section, right? When we multiply that up to the other sections in the orchestra, talking about a significant chunk of RAM. Final thing I'll note is that even if you have enough RAM to just flat out load the full multi-mic orchestral template in one go, you may still find some benefit in composing first on the more streamlined version. Because with your multi-mic one, you might still hit some performance problems, your CPU and storage drives having to do a lot more work to move all that extra sample memory around, especially in the busier, fast moving 2D sections of a piece. Oh right, finally finished. So that only took you 27 minutes. Now just do the other sections. Oh, wait, meant to tell you that queue had some picture changes. So could you just do that again on the latest conform project? So those were three general approaches to composing with a more streamlined template and then loading additional mic positions as quickly as we can when it comes time to mix. Flexibility and modularity of the Vienna Ensemble Pro solution here makes it my favorite choice. And again, those are benefits even on a single computer setup. Some point soon, I plan to make a deeper dive video into setting up modules in VE Pro. And when I do, I'll try to remember to toss that up this way. Until then, we'll have to leave it to the fates and or YouTube algorithm. Thanks everyone for watching. Happy scoring.